Hi everyone. So in this video, we will cover an interesting topic, a web server and maybe a difference between a web server and an application server. So in whenever I have worked with many engineers, what I have found is there is a common misconception in understanding the difference between web server and application server. So this is uh, a video where I would like to address those uh, differences. What are these differences? and what is the purpose of each server so let's just get right into it uh, so first let's address what is a web server so web server typically it's just a machine or you can say a cpu a server uh, in a data center so let's say there's a data center so within this data center you will have this big machine so let's call it data center now within this data center you will have this machine known as web server now what does this web server do it will typically store let's say some html css etc static files and it will have certain rules it will have certain configurations which will allow it to route typical request to a different server to a different machine now this machine where this web server will route it its request will be the application server now in most of the cases the application server and uh, the web server would be in the same data center uh, to reduce the latency but there could be cases where it, these could be in the different data centers as well but typically to keep it keep the latency very down the these are typically kept in the same data center now what does this application server do it will have the application code it will have the business logic and it can interact with the database as well interact with the database get the data from the database and pass the response to the web server and web server in turn will pass the response to the client now to get uh, to understand the complete flow let's say initially you load a website let's say xyz.com the client sends the request to the web server now web server will provide an html css response to the client now this client by client i mean it could be a browser it could be a mobile device or it could be maybe an iot device or anything so it will provide an html css response now i am explaining a very simplistic version of it it's a bit more complicated there is cdns there are buckets so we will delve into more details in future videos but to get a holistic view let's understand this model first now there would be some other request as well this could be http request this could be get or a uh, post http request now these kind of requests the web server will have a rule because web server doesn't know what to do with these kind of requests so what web server will do it will typically pass these kind of requests to the application server wherein there will be your business logic your application code and your application code will decide what to do with that request maybe the request is to fetch some data from the db or maybe post some data into the db so that is completely up to the application server and the application server will provide the response to the web server and web server in uh, will just pass that response to the client now some examples of uh, application server would be uh, a famous example is Tomcat. This is used for Java applications and your web server applications would be uh, web servers would be Nginx or you have uh, Apache as well. Now with Golang and Node.js, the concept of application server is a bit different. Maybe I'll cover a complete separate video for that. But for typical Java applications, it would be Tomcat. 
so now in future videos we will get into hands-on practice or uh, of how do we configure the application server uh, sorry how do we configure the web server we'll deploy a live nginx play around with configurations and also understand many other use cases of the web server it can help with load balancing it can help with caching it, it helps in acting as a proxy server, reverse proxy, and a forward proxy server. So all those use cases we will uh, consider and we will learn them hands-on, uh, typically with Nginx, maybe a few use cases with Apache as well uh, in the upcoming videos. But in this video, we will do a live exercise of uh, some live websites uh, wherein we'll try to understand uh, where the request is coming from. So let's say we will go to the website called flipkart.com for folks out of India. Uh, Flipkart is a huge e-commerce website in India, just for reference. So here we will try to understand where the request is coming from. We will reload the page. And if we see the very first request, here the request URL, here the browser is requesting for flipkart.com. And in response, you are getting the HTML CSS completely. Now in the headers, if you go to response headers, if you see the server, it is Nginx. So that means my browser requested for flipkart.com. What the web server did is provided with the HTML and CSS. And in this case, the web server is the Nginx. Now we will go through a couple of more websites now here you might be a bit confused but i will explain it let's see it's not allowing me to inspect maybe i'll just reload the site is not allowing me to inspect at all okay Maybe we can try Amazon.com or Amazon.in. Okay, here I'm able to inspect. So we'll reload this page again. Here you will see Amazon.in, but here you will see a different thing. The server is named as server. So why this happens is why the server is named as server. The as server here because the infra team the devops team at amazon what they have decided is in the configurations they have decided in the response header the server name would be hidden or it will be just uh, named as server so that the people outside won't get to know the actual server this is maybe a security policy maybe they just want to make sure no attacker is actually able to know what kind of server is there uh, so this could be a kind of a basic policy. I actually wanted to show up uh, Mintra as well. Let me try again because they have an interesting configuration. Okay, but it looks like I'm unable to inspect the site at all. I don't know what's wrong with Mintra here. But anyways, you get the idea here. Uh, so yeah, that was it for this video. Uh, do follow, do subscribe. Uh, in future videos, I will cover more interesting video, especially on the hands-on part of the web server and Nginx. Thank you.